this video things were a little bit different. I've got cameras, um, I edited things and uh, recorded audio from different sources. So the, the only issue I've got is um, I've only just picked up this microphone here. Um, without that, the audio was a bit all over the place. So you'll find out how I built the uh, mini arcade machine. As always, I'm going to have a quick detour from my usual projects. So today, or this weekend rather, I'm going to try and make a miniature gauntlet machine, the two-player version. So this is one of my faves as a kid. I spent many a time playing it in the arcades and on the ZX Spectrum. So what I've got here is a, like a 10 by 7 inch screen, LCD. I've got a controller. I've got bags of buttons. And I've got a Raspberry Pi and RetroPie, which is a uh, arcade game emulator which I can throw in there. So the theory is, I've looked at that, I've done a couple of little sketches here. So what I want to do is essentially make this out of some uh, MDF, and then I will lay over some vinyl, so it looks pretty much like that, try and replicate the, the side stickers on a printer, and then use my uh, carbide 3D CNC machine to essentially cut it out. That's the theory. So now to the practice. Okay, I'm doing uh, the layout now. So I've got the green. There we have the holes. One mock-up. I've kind of got the, the one side done. I've mounted all the uh, buttons and the joysticks, so I'm just kind of checking it for size to make sure it looks scaled down, which I'm happy with. I've picked up some uh, MDF from Home Depot. Unfortunately, they didn't sell eight by four sheets, so I just had to buy it in uh, two by fours, but whatever. Now I think we'll be into the computer to put this into the CNC program and see if it actually works. An experiment for me. So here is the template. I've been uh, measuring it and transferring it into the Carbide Create tool, which is the kind of CNC creation software for the Carbide Create CNC machine I have there. What I've got here is essentially this is the kind of almost the maximum cutting area. So what I'm going to do is machine out the edge of the arcade case or panel side panel up to about this point here so I'll have some hanging out and then I'll manually trim the last piece once it's cut so that's the theory so what you can see here is there's kind of two lines you've got the outside one which is the cutter and then there's an inside one which is a rabbit that's going to hold the panels and the little squares are essentially tabs so that the once it's cut it out it doesn't um, fly off and jam in it. So luckily the tool has a simulation mode, so here it is. 
So this is the uh, the output that it's going to show me. You can kind of see it moving around there. So you've got the, the outside of the case with the tabs and then you've got the rabbit on the inside which it will run through hopefully in one pass. So the next step now is to put this into the CNC machine and do a pass without a tool just to see how it comes out, looks like it's going to work and then if that pans through then I will cut some MDF and try it out. So it turns out my original theory of having a bit hanging off the side that I can then trim isn't going to work. So the problem is that this is about to here is my cutting area um, and the gantry actually obscures this part over here so you can kind of see the the gantry there as it comes along it stops you from hanging anything out so what I've done is cut myself a bit of NDF that fits the workspace and then I've run a simulation and it all seems to be working fine so now I'm going to actually power up the tool and give it a run There we have the cut, first time. Looks pretty good, I'm happy with it. So you can see I've kind of screwed down the material that I had. I've got the little tabs to hold it in place. So now I'm gonna unscrew it, pop the tabs off and clean it up, see how it looks. Here we've got the cut from the CNC machine. So the theory now is I'll just clean up the uh, find a bit of tool for it, clean up the edges, well clean up, I'm going to chop out the edges. So the, the big question is, does my uh, rabbit actually take the MDF that I bought? That will be saved for the, uh, the next video I think. So what I'm going to do now is essentially cut the same but in reverse. So I've got both sides and then I can start piecing it together. The left and rights are done, fresh out of the machine, I've chopped them out, so now I'll clean them up and work out the next step. I've got the pieces all cleaned up, fresh off the CNC machine, so the piece together like this, the switches go through and they kind of center it out. And then what I've just done is drilled some small pilot holes for the holes to mount the joysticks. Now I'm gonna glue it together. The joysticks and buttons are in with the support underneath, so I'm kind of happy with the fit. I've uh, just thrown the screen in there to make sure it's all got the correct proportion, so I'm happy with it. And then now I need to work out how to actually fit everything in there. So the only other stuff going in here is a Raspberry Pi and a couple of tiny circuit boards, so that's easy. Uh, I just have to make sure it's not going to fly about and move anywhere. Other than that, I'm going to call it a night and get back on it in the morning. Time to start fitting the electronics. So I've extended it, made the base. I've put a couple more holes in so I can uh, put the select and start buttons down there to give me four buttons up here, which will let me play a lot more games. So I've found some screws that kind of will go in the back of the monitor. I made a uh, card template using my dirty fingers. I've transfer punched that. And if you can see the little punches onto a bit of aluminium which I'm now going to drill the holes for the screws and then bend it so that essentially it sits over the frame, the monitor frame and I'm going to hopefully have some adjustments so I can move the monitor about just slightly to make sure it's always centred because if it's not centred it will drive me crazy. 
So now I'm just going to drill the holes in here, bend it over on the press over there, and then test it out. Here's the finished bracket. So super simple shape, plops over the back of the monitor. You've got the four holes that bolt to the back of the monitor, and then four on either side, which will mount onto the reinforced brackets I just glued on with some uh, Aerodite. So put it together, see how it looks. I've done a final test assembly, it all fits together. A couple of things I did, I drilled some holes here so that I can get a screwdriver through to screw in the mounts for the joysticks. The screen surrounds all finished, um, the arrow lights dried. So these ones, what I think I'm gonna do is actually just cover them in plastic, the stick on vinyl. Uh, and then that's an easy job. But before I do that, I need to work out how I'm gonna join these together so that I can cover those in vinyl. Um, and then also I'm thinking of routing the edges so it's got rounded off and paint the edges. So that's the task now. I'm wondering whether to just put a band across here and kind of glue and screw it, or whether I should um, come up with another mechanism that's a bit more elegant, but I'll give it some thought. Okay, what I'm doing here is attaching the vinyl to the MDF. So I've done a couple of pieces. They've come out very nicely. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to do the last couple. And then while I'm doing this, I'm also priming and painting just black the holes in that. So I want to put the vinyl on, I can cut them out, and then you won't see the, the MDF. I don't know if you can see that there, but this is uh, filler primer. Because it's MDF, you kind of want to fill in all the stuff and then give it a sand before you put the paint on. And with that done, you uh, through the ends with a scalpel, and it's good to go. I've vinyled some of the MDF. You can kind of see that I've got matte and gloss. So I've not done the back yet because I've only got enough gloss left, I think, to do the, the sides. So I don't want to waste it on the back. So I'm going to get the sides done. If there's enough left, I'll do the back as well. And then over here, I've got the parts that I've painted. So. This one here I painted and then realized I didn't actually have to paint it. So the reason for painting is where the joystick goes through here, I wanna make sure there's a black line around there because when I essentially cover it in vinyl, I'm gonna cut a circle and then it will be um, kind of clean when people look at it. That's the theory anyway. And then the surround for the screen, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, whether I uh, just paint it and leave it or whether I put vinyl and then cut out the centre. And then this piece here with the holes for screwing the joysticks in, I'm just going to paint because no one's ever going to see it. So I'm waiting for that to dry now and while it's drying I'm going to work out the best way to finish this and put the gloss vinyl on it. So far I'm happy. The uh, rabbits fit. I just did a little bit of sanding so the, the vinyl covering's not uh, hindered it in any way. So now I'm just waiting for these parts to dry so I can cover those in vinyl and slot them in for a final test fit. And then it will be a case of painting the sides, kind of giving it a sand first. Obviously I've kind of done one side. I'm thinking of routing the edges on these, just give them a slight curve, but I've got to think it through. And then I can uh, glue it together and start putting the insides. Just masked off the side panels, so I've kind of test fitted all the um, front panels and the screen surround in the rabbits and they all fit, so I don't want to make them any smaller. So I mask them off, so as I paint, it doesn't kind of build up the thickness in the rabbits, which are just the right size. So here I'll do a couple of coats of the primer, give it a light sand, and then I'll put the gloss enamel on, which will take a day to dry, and then I can put the vinyl on the other side and assemble it. I'm not going to lie, setting up the uh, retro pie was a, a very easy task. You just essentially copied the SD card here and it popped on and everything worked. The controls kind of plugged in, they worked perfectly first time except I mounted them upside down. The, the problem was the games. So if I select these the I've got Gauntlet, the only game I care about. I'll select that. It kind of comes up the config screen I'm going to get rid of, but once it's loaded, the problem I've got is I didn't check the spec of the monitor, so there's no audio, so I've just 
ordered some uh, speakers for it. The other thing is making this work probably took me two, three hours, just understanding how the how the process actually goes, how Ras, uh, sorry, RetroPie actually works, the various different things that are involved in it. But I got there in the end. Here we have the circuit. So I'm just working out the positioning. So you've got the, the two joysticks there and you've got the controller boards for the joysticks and the Raspberry Pi. And then over here I've got the speakers I just chopped out. And what I'm thinking of doing is taking the controller boards for the joysticks and the buttons, screwing those to the side where the, you can't really see under here, but there's actually a double thickness where I join two bits of wood. So that's a perfect place to mount them. So the controls will go one either side like so and then the pie i'm not sure yet maybe i'll fit it on one of the sides or maybe i'll put a new mounting plate kind of just underneath the uh, select and start buttons but that's where i'm at, at the moment the painting is all done so i've just done a quick test assembly and then it was so tightly put together i don't actually want to take it apart so at the moment it's unglued so what i'm thinking of doing now is actually using epoxy down the seams to hold it together because it's uh, it's kind of quite delicate even though it's made out of quarter inch MDF. So now it's there, I'm reluctant to take it apart. The only bit I've got left to do is kind of a cover for the back there and then work out where the speakers and all the other components are gonna go. Droopy switches, so they've hooked them all up. Each one has the connector for the switch itself and then power for the LED so they light up. And then inside you can kind of just make it out. So here are the controller boards for the joystick and the buttons for player one. And then player two side is there. I just screwed them into the support plate I put, which kind of worked out pretty well. And then the loose power connections for the LEDs I taped up making sure to separate the red and black wires because you don't want to short just stuck those there for now in case I want to add more buttons later uh, so now I just need to oh the other crucial thing here is make sure you put the screw rings on first otherwise you're gonna have to unplug them all and re-plug them to put the screw cap on so that's what I'm doing now just gonna screw them all in and uh, work out where the Raspberry Pi is gonna go along with the power supplies so you can see here I ended up using the epoxy and gluing a couple of bits of MDF either side, kind of little trims uh, to give it the uh, support it needs so it doesn't fall apart. I've just epoxied the pie there, I've glued it to a bit of MDF and put it in the middle. And then you can see here all the wiring's complete. So you've got the player one joystick button controller, player two joystick button controller, player two joystick, player one joystick and all the buttons in between. So once this is set, which is about five minutes, then I'll uh, hook it all up and make sure it still works. It works. And interestingly, after a number of years, I can still get to level seven from uh, the first to second screen. So sad times as a child, but they paid off as an adult. Got these, uh, what I call a kettle plug, a computer plug, I don't know, but they uh, essentially it's from Amazon. They were like two bucks a piece, I think got a power switch on it so you can plug it in and turn it on so what I'm going to do now is wire the power from this into the two little adapters that I've got so these are uh, step down kind of turn it into DC power from mains and you can see the little red wires there so that's kind of positive and negative they're going to get wired into that which then gets plugged into the wall and then the theory with these is I'm essentially going to extend these wires and put the cover back on so it's all secured inside and then seal it so there's no loose connections anywhere that are going to short. Put the wires in, now I'm just going to drill a couple of holes in the ends of each one of the caps so I can feed the wires through and put it back on. There we are. This is how they look, so I just soldered on the white and the black wires to the reds, put some shrink wrap around them, fed the wires through the holes I drilled, and then clipped them together. And there's the power supply ready to be uh, wired up to the input. Easy peasy. All the power wiring's complete. 
So I ended up Velcroing the little um, power blocks on the inside. They're light and Velcro is more than good enough for that. I've just cable tied the loose wires. This is all hooked up though. The little red light's not working yet. I'll come back to that. So the thing has power and I'll uh, flip it up and show you it working. So the, before I do that, I think what I'm gonna do is actually make a base that's just slots in here um, to make sure no one accidentally touches any of the live wires or things like that. The base is pretty simple. So I've used my favorite epoxy resin to glue a couple of little brackets on. I made out of some hardwood because the screws are gonna come out of, in and out of here a few times and then the plate just kind of slots over like that. And then what I ended up doing was marking the holes, drilling them here, putting the plate in, and then just doing a little light drill so I knew exactly where to put the holes in the hardwood. So now just screw this on, up to the top, vinyl on the sides, project done. Okay, I'm just making the uh, backing plate here, which kind of sits over the, the top there. And then the, the sides are a little bit wood colored, so nothing better than a Sharpie to solve the problem. One of the last steps in the project is sign vinyl. So my theory is I stick the vinyl down and then I trim around the edge loosely and then I'm going to measure about five millimeters side so that the vinyl is not completely on the edge. So when you play it, you're not going to catch it and it starts peeling off. So first step is to apply the vinyl, then trim it roughly to size, and then see if I can uh, do the inset without actually destroying anything. Here we go. Final piece for the arcade machine appeared today, fresh from Amazon. It's a little USB socket that I'm gonna just pop next to the power there so I can plug a keyboard in and do the things I need to do without having to take it apart. So to get it in, I'm gonna take it apart, drill a hole, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and then we should be golden. Lesson learned, don't rush your last job, because like an idiot, I drilled the hole too big. So now I've uh, made a little, this is aluminium, a little aluminium uh, spring plate that I'm gonna put in and hopefully it will hold it in the center and then I can just uh, glue this or tack it in. Uh, so yeah, don't measure once and cut twice, measure twice and cut once. The conclusion I came to was using my favorite tool uh, an epoxy resin glue, so I'm just waiting for it to set and then I'm going to redrill the hole the correct size through the middle and then once the USB mounts on there you won't even know that I f***ed up. Here we have the hole, so I'm not sure it's the preferred technique for shrinking a hole you build too big but it seems to work well, so that's the resin that I just drilled out the middle, there's the hole, so hopefully with a bit of filing I will be able to get my USB connector in there. There we have the finished machine. All the buttons, the keyboard, plugged in via the USB slot that I fixed, so you can kind of remove that when you're using it and plug it in when you need it. Um, you generally kind of plug that in when you've uh, got games and things you want to download because it's illegal to possess them. Power it on, I still haven't fixed that little red light. And then what's gonna load here is a thing called RetroPie. So in here's the Raspberry Pi, obviously. RetroPie is just takes the standard Raspberry Pi operating system and makes an interface so you can easily play your favorite games. So it kind of takes a little while to start up. Once it's running, then you uh, just select the game you want. I've already gone through and configured everything, so at the moment we've got Gauntlet and we've got Street Fighter. Gauntlet, my favorite, so you just hit a button to select it. And then this essentially loads the original two-player version of the arcade machine from the, I guess, late 80s, maybe early 90s, I'd have to check. There it is, Tunes of Childhood. And then essentially it kind of, when it ran, it did these kind of things and you could, um, 
you just kind of pretend you're playing even when your mates knew you weren't. And then for this one, you want to insert a coin. So down the bottom here, you've got start and select. And when you hit select on these, it gives you some coins there. And then you can use the joystick to select who you want to be. And then your buddy can come along and put more money in than you because they were richer. And then they select who they want to be. I think will be the elf and then one of you pushes start and the other pushes start and now you've got two people playing the same game getting in the way of each other and uh, generally causing annoyance and that was about it so i spent 24 hours playing this game for a charity event at a local computer club and it's uh, burnt into my memory so there you go the final arcade machine i'm pleased with it so i think the next step probably a different video is i'll um i need to work out how to do the graphics on the side and print gauntlet up here um maybe put a fake coin slot in the middle but otherwise i'm happy with it time for another project well time to get back to the projects i haven't finished in three years but one day Yeah, I'm not good enough for turbo. So this game I was absolutely terrible at. I never understood why anyone would know the key combinations, let alone understand them. But it's all good fun when you were a wee young lad. Oh, I did a combo thing and a kick no now i'm getting nailed how do i get out of that there we go up some more kicking random stuff oh oh we win somehow <laughs>